Hi, Spring fans. Welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. You know, one of the things I think is super important is being able to hide security from users as much as possible. Not, not from you, a developer. I'm talking about the users of our application. To the extent that we can make uh, security both secure and efficient or pleasant or you know out of the way, that's a good thing. And so there are a number of features in Spring Security or that are forthcoming in particular in Spring Security that I think really help in this regard. One of the things I'm very excited about is one-time token support. So today we're gonna to take a look at a feature that should land in the branch, in the sort of main branch for Spring Security hopefully soon, in the next week or two, one would imagine. Possibly by the time you're watching this, it's already there. It might even be GA by the time you're watching this. Remember, this is for Spring Security 6.4, which in turn will be rolled out with part of Spring Boot, which comes out in November. So Spring Boot 3.4, November 2024, okay? The feature is just a way to log in without using a password. Basically, you I'm sure you've seen this flow before. You go to a website, it gives you a link, you click on the link, you're logged in. It's pretty straightforward, right? We're not gonna, there's not a lot, of, a lot of explaining required here. We're just gonna implement it very, very quickly. Now, bear in mind, I'm using a branch of one of the committers to, to Spring Security that he's got going and that will soon get merged into, to, into master, into trunk, into main. So let's just dive right into it, shall we? We're gonna start that Spring.io. Uh, we're gonna use Spring Security, although we're not gonna use the version that you would get from here, bear that in mind. We'll use one-time tokens, and we'll use the web support. Open this up, and the first thing's first, I've got the local branch on my machine, obviously, so I'm gonna use that. So Spring Security dot version 6.40 dot snapshot, all right? Uh, and with that, I should have my application all set up. Okay, all right. So, so, what do we need to do? Well, we need to, first of all, define some users. Uh, and so, you know, this is this is a simple question of authentication. What users do you have in your system? Uh, I'll use user details password service. Okay, or rather user details service. You know what, we'll just use a specific subtype. There you go, user details manager. Okay, and for our users, I will say user dot with dot password encoder. <laughs> there you go, it's like I've written this code before. So this will be Josh, let's say, and that's Rob. Okay, and we'll change this to be Rob, and that'll be Josh. Passwords will be PW because I'm that lazy admin quote, voila, okay? And we'll just pass that into the collection here. So Josh, Rob. All right, that's the users in our system. Obviously, you should do better at home. You shouldn't have hard-coded usernames and passwords. You certainly don't want your user definitions hard-coded in your Java source code. You know, all the usual things apply, okay? Use the SQL. There's a, there's a JDBC user details manager, or you could use LDAP or whatever. Just do something better. You know what to do. Okay, moving on. Now, how are people going to access our site? Well, give them a security filter chain, okay? HTTP security throws exception dot build. Now we want to do a couple of things. We want to do form login. Sure, you want that, of course. But then we also want one time token. Okay, so here we're going to pass in a customizer that gives us a chance to configure a one time token service, the authentication converter. But basically, I think the happiest flow looks like this one time. Okay, one time token success handler. And basically you're given a chance to generate a token for a user. And so you get the token, one time token dot get token value. We're gonna create a message and we're gonna print it on the console. Please go to localhost 8080, login OTT token equals, and then token, okay? I'm gonna just gonna print this out, but we need to tell the user what to do. So that, like this is an out of band Relay, basically. We're sending a message out of band. We're basically saying, dear user, go to your console and click on this link, and that'll log you in. Now, normally, this could be email, right? You could use something like SendGrid or Twilio, right? Is it 1.0 or 
two L's, I'm not sure, but Twilio, and that they, they can do SMS or phone calls. I don't know if you want to have a URL read to you via phone call, right? You could use Java Mail, I guess, if you're doing email that way. I mean, the, the sky's the limit, right? You get the idea. Uh, you could you could do all sorts of things here, but what you, what you want to do is send them a message in a way that they can get without being logged in, right? And so now you got to tell them what to do. So here I'm going to say, you've got console now, right? And we want to get the writer there, and maybe we'll say writer dot response dot set content type, media type, whatever, HTML, okay? So actually, I'm not sure if we need that. We can just say response dot get writer like that, okay? So there's a couple things going on here, right? We're, we're sending a request. Let's clean this up a little bit. It's not as scary as it looks with all these extra inline types. There we go. Get rid of all that, okay? Okay, good. So we're sending. We're, we're saying we support form logins for the users, Josh and Rob and their password. But also, if they click on the button, they'll get a one-time token. Instead, they can click on this link, which will take them to the same application. Spring Security will automatically set up a login OTT endpoint for you. So I guess we just need to try it out. Huh? Okay, go to okay, go to localhost 8080. Oh, we don't have anything there. Let's create a simple endpoint. So we have something set up, right? Okay, map string hello. I'm just going to inject the current user so we can get that response back. Hello, hit name. Okay, very good. So, and that should work. I guess we need to configure authorization as well. So we can do authorized HTTP requests. Any request is authenticated. Okay, localhost. Very good. So it's saying, hey, do you want to log in via username and password? I could do that, Rob PW. Not now. It says hello, Rob. Okay, great. I click on I click on incognito mode, private mode. Go here, and now I want to do a one-time password for let's say Josh. Click on you've got console mail. Go to the console, and sure enough, there it is. I click copy this URL. Click on that, and it says hello, Josh. I'm logged in. So remember, over here I was logged in as Rob in my regular browser in this incognito private you know cookie list session. I clicked on the link and I got logged in. Pretty amazing, pretty easy, very, very secure, very fast. It's even easier than asking your user to remember their password. Remember, passwords are terrible. They're just not a very good idea, right? This is why we're moving to a continuum of sort of multi-factor login options like one-time tokens, like biometrics as enabled through pass keys, about which, by the by, I already did a Spring Tips video. So pass keys are amazing because you can use your finger, you can use your face ID, you can use a UB key, uh, an external key. The whole point is that you have some other thing that you can present to the service that only you could be in possession of. And these are much more, you, a lot of times in the case of your, your face ID or your fingerprint, these are a lot easier to come by as well than trying to remember some random password. Sure, password managers make that work less tedious, but you know, how many of us are using password managers? I don't think most of us are, and that's the problem. In order to make the work of remembering all these passwords easier, the right answer would be to use a password manager. But people don't. They just use the same password over and over and over again. So we want to, whenever we can, discourage people from using passwords. And if they do use passwords, then use something better, you know? And, uh, you know, there have been studies that even have even shown that people don't do the right thing even if you force them, if you prompt them to change the password every three months, they, they just add a number to it, right? It's the same guessable password plus one, you know, or whatever. So either way, I like this. I like where we're headed here. There's more coming, more cool stuff. We'll talk about that in another installment. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, we'll see you next time.